Hello everyone, I hope this finds everybody well. We are going to talk about another technique for vertical positioning. It's called satellite altimetry. Satellite altimetry is basically a technique used to map the seas and the oceans. We can then determine the, uh, the, the sea level and over time, we can see sea level variations. It is very important for geodesy because it is essentially the only technique that allow us to measure or to model the geoid over the body of waters. And we know very well that over 70% of the planet Earth is covered by water. I am indicating here a reference that is available on Desire to Learn. This is an overview paper uh, written some time ago, but it's quite good and uh, it is also a lengthy paper. So uh, you can have that not just as a reference for the course, but also a reference uh, for your life, professional life. We can define the overall operation of satellite altimetry as the use of space-based sensors taking advantage of the properties of electromagnetic wave propagation. The type of response of the sensor uh, to the ocean surface will be either geometric or physical. Geometric, which is of interest to geodesy, refer to the changes in the ocean surface relief, which means the ocean topography, resulting from a number of generating forces such as tidal, geostrophic, and wind action. The physical responses, which are more of interest of oceanography, relate to changes in the physical characteristics of the ocean waters, such as temperature, salinity, ocean color, sea state, refractivity, reflectivity. Therefore, satellite altimetry is a technique of interest to geodesists and oceanographers. Now, if you go a little bit back in, uh, and look at the, the two type of space-based operations, we have the satellite imagery and we have the satellite microwave techniques. Satellite imagery uh, deals with the visual and the infrared portion of the spectrum, and it has limitations due to cloud cover and darkness. On the other hand, satellite microwave techniques have no limitations due to weather or darkness. What is geostrophic flow and geostrophic force? A quick reminder. Geostrophic flow corresponds to the steady wind resulting from the balance of the pressure force and the Coriolis force. And geostrophic force is a virtual force used to account for the change in direction of the wind relative to the Earth's surface. When dealing with satellite microwave systems, we have either the so-called passive sensors and the active sensors. The passive sensors, which are microwave radiometers, scanners, measure the electromagnetic energy that is emitted by the matter. In this case, would be the body of water. The active sensors, which are radars, uh, they will be emitting uh, energy and then measuring its uh, its return. So we have two types of active sensors. We have the scatterometers and we have the altimeters. The scatterometers will be illuminating an area of the sea at known vertical angles. So the illumination here refers basically the area that the beam will cover. It measures the intensity of the return signal 
which is directly related to the roughness of the sea, and from that we can infer surface wind velocity. The altimeters will do this illumination at vertical angle. That's a basic difference. It is going to measure the travel time, the intensity and structure of the reflected pulse. So do, the wind can also be inferred as well as the wave height and the height of the spacecraft above the ocean surface. This figure represents a simplified geometry of satellite altimetry. Consider a satellite uh, orbiting the Earth and at a particular time it will be emitting its, uh, its energy and from that we can measure from its return we can measure the height or the vertical distance between the satellite and the sea surface which is represented by the, the, uh, the color green. Um, we know the orbit of the satellite so we have to know that must be, it's, it's a given uh, quantity for example uh, GNSS on board of the satellite. From that we can determine the uh, lowercase h that is the geodetic height. The geodetic height minus the measurement will give us the so-called sea surface height represented by the Greek letter uh, zeta. Um, we also, from a geoidal map, we can have the uh, geoidal height, and from that, what the remaining term is the known is known as the dynamic ocean topography, also refer many times to sea surface topography. So uh, here we have something that is very interesting because we have basically two quantities of interest. Uh, that uh, can be treated as unknowns or unknowns. Uh, they are the, um, the, the dynamic ocean topography and the geoidal height at the sea. The fact is that the sea surface is not smooth. It is actually rough because you have uh, winds and, uh, and waves and, uh, and currents, etc. So the radar at altimeter determines the altitude of the spacecraft above not the sea surface itself but the instantaneous sea surface that we call the instantaneous electromagnetic mean sea surface uh, and it is done by measuring the interval between transmission and reception of the pulse making also allowance for transmitter receiver internal time delays Basic relations for a geometric altimetry. We have the sea surface height equation, uh, zeta equals to h minus a, uh, that describes the ideal situation if a, which is the measured vertical distance between satellite and the, uh, and the sea, and h, which is the geodetic height, are free of errors. So the equation for the instantaneous sea surface topography, uh, zeta sub a, is the difference between zeta minus n, n is the geoidal height, and uh, we, by replacing zeta, we have h, we have uh, geodetic height minus the vertical distance minus the geoidal height. The magnitude of sea surface topography, uh, it can reach up to two meters. Uh, now, of course, these uh, equations are valid if we disregard any source of errors, which is not, not the case, and uh, we're going to talk about them uh, in, in the next slide. A little bit more about the geometric relations. The basic altimeter measurement is the vertical distance, and we have to realize that the vertical distance is the geometric distance between the altimeter's antenna, and actually the antenna, its antenna uh, electric center, and the instantaneous electromagnetic mean sea surface over the altimeter's footprint. 
That's why it is very important to know where the center of mass of the satellite is and have these, uh, this geometry between the satellite center of mass and its electrical center of the antenna very well modeled and that is going to be changing as the, the, the uh, satellite orbits the Earth. The other thing is the basic altimeter derived quantity. Okay, that is the instantaneous sea surface height. And the departure between the instantaneous mean sea surface height from the geoid, it gives us the sea surface topography, which is a quantity of interest uh, for oceanographic studies, provided that all known oceanographic effects are removed. And, and what are these complications? Uh, they're basically source of errors. Um, we can think of the, uh, the um, uh, lack of exact knowledge of the satellite center of mass. Uh, we can think of uh, errors associated with the, uh, the, the uh, antenna of the satellite. Uh, we see the, uh, the issue of the altimeter footprint. So what the altimeter is measuring is not just one beam that is uh, very narrow. It actually, it is a wide beam. Uh, therefore, it is measuring the return comes from everywhere. Okay, and uh, in this figure, we are drawing the uh, sea roughness. The sea roughness would represent the uh, instantaneous state of the sea, and we are taking a mean which we referred to uh, previously as the electromagnetic mean sea surface. And we can think also talk about, refer to that as the instantaneous uh, electromagnetic sea surface as it is uh, taking place uh, at that particular epoch. In red, we have the instantaneous mean sea surface. Troughs of waves tend to reflect pulses better than do wave crests. Therefore, the centroid of the distribution of return signal power is shifted away from the mean sea surface level illuminated by the transmitted signal towards the trough of the waves. This shift is referred to the electromagnetic bias, and, it's called, and it causes the altimeter to overestimate the mean height of the illuminated instantaneous ocean area. Uh, that what we refer to the uh, altimeter's footprint. The instantaneous um, electromagnetic mean sea surface can be related to the instantaneous mean sea surface if the average wave height over the altimeter's footprint is known. To deduce the mean height of the, uh, of the um, instantaneous mean sea surface above the reference surface, one needs the altitude of the spacecraft about the instantaneous mean sea surface uh, and the satellite orbital information. So, uh, of course, the altitude that corresponds to the measured vertical distance and the satellite orbital information will come from onboard uh, GNSS receivers. Uh, you can click a pause and, uh, and uh, go over this slide because these are things that we already discussed. Now, oh, error sources. Uh, we have the uh, instrumental errors at the sensor level, timing, calibration, and noise and calibration that we can think here of the issue of the difference between the, um, the, the center, the electrical center of the antenna and the center of mass of the satellite. Signal propagation errors, ionospheric and tropospheric errors will affect the, uh, the electromagnetic waves. So the same treatment as done for the uh, GNSS satellites. Okay, ionosphere is observed in two frequencies, or we are going, to, or we can use ground-based measurements uh, to measure the total electrical content, or can use models. And the troposphere, 
we have to take into account the dry and wet components of the troposphere and apply a model. The other source of errors uh, are this, is related to the spacecraft position. So we have here issue of the uncertainty associated with the GNSS. Now, of course, the, the use the GNSS on board has made has made these uh, uh, has mitigated these sorts of errors, errors tremendously, but we still have that. We're going to have that at the at the order of of several centimeters. So the inaccuracy in altimeter height under typical favor conditions can be considered to vary between 10 and 30 centimeters due to all these uh, these error budget uh, put together. Here we present a list of satellite altimetry uh, missions. Uh, oceanography from space started with the Skylab uh, in the 1970s, uh, then came GEOS-3, also 1970s. Uh, and then we start to have uh, dedicated satellite missions, alt altimetry missions. CSAT was short-lived, GEOSAT, GEOSAT follow-on, European Remote Sensing uh, 1, Topax Poseidon, which was a very famous uh, uh, geodetic satellite mission. Then came JSON, and the JSON became a series. GOCHE was uh, not dedicated satellite altimetry per se. It was mapping the uh, gravity field, but uh, also had altimeter on board. And Sentinel-3, 3A, etc. Uh, now, Cryosat has also uh, also does altimetry, but its uh, its intent is on mapping the uh, the ice ice sheets. Uh, we end here uh, with the uh, with a drawing, artistic view of the Jason satellite mission, uh, which has been one of the most successful ones. So uh, until next time.